not, who's not? Yeah. Who really on top? Who got they on shop? The hustle don't stop. Nope. Same old shit. shit. We're grinding. You know ain't nothing changed. One he check it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Say, check it, check it, check it, man. It's your boy ECEO, man. I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man. We got a guy here special, guys. He don't need no introduction, man. Little Chad is in the building, and he ain't playing no game. About to take everything over by storm. Yes, sir. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Thank y'all, man. Man, you know, uh, man, I'm down here in H-Town, man. I called, hey, man, you came, man. Yes, you sir. You know, uh, shout out to uh, Fat, GSO Fat, GSO. for making it happen. Got to show love to where the love need to be shown, exactly. man. Exactly, yes, Go and get it, baby. I already know you got a player. Yes, sir. You see, I like to get to know about the man. <laughs> Not the artist, but the man. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, born and raised here in... Texas? Texas, yeah. Okay, Lufkin, what part? Texas. The Lufkin. Lufkin. Texas. Country, East I Texas. I took you through Lufkin when we came. We came that back way to go to Houston. It was a wooded. It was wood. That um street that goes straight long. All the way to Houston, fifty nine. Fifty nine. Yeah. When wow. we came out, yeah, he lived Ain't over there. Ain't nothing out there. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that college out there, SFA. Angelina. Angelina. Angelina, yeah. Uh, it's a fan, now, because it's, it's like it's 15 close. minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay, what school did you go to? Uh, I went to Lufkin High School. Okay. Mm -hmm. I ain't go to college. Okay, did you like it? It was high school, school. <laughs> how, how old were you when you left Lufkin? Mm, 21. You 21. left sort of late. Twenty, yeah, twenty. Because some people 20, in yeah, twenty twenty one. Some people in small towns, you know, be dying to leave as soon as I they leave. I left Lufkin because I went to prison. That was my that's first the time only reason. Yeah, you had to get up out of there. Nah, I'm saying like that's when I left. When I got but on it because it was, it was it was it was. Think about it. Yeah, it was destiny first of all. But what the hell did they? Because it ain't much to get into down there. What in the they country, what they what they right. get you for? Uh, Let's talk about it. Uh, feeling like fire on, just that's it. Shit. Yeah. Did you have any other felonies before that? Mm -mm. That's the first time and only time. That don't sound like right. yeah. 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 something I going on. Yeah, that's what, that, yeah. I was young, like you previous. What? I just I, I kept Always getting caught with guns. Oh. Yeah, like, that's it. And you were how old? I was I was seventeen. Seventeen. Well, I was. 16 when I first caught my first charge. That was in Nacogdoches. For How much time did you get? I uh, got three years. Three you years. served the whole three years? I did two and a half. Two and a half. Well, how was that, what was that like going to what prison for the first time? Mm, terrible. What about it? Like, what was the first thing? Because you know how one thing I've, I've known, like, anybody that I've known that went, mm -hmm. um, they always said like, because they have this notion of how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So whenever they're getting ready to go, they psyching themselves up, saying all sorts of stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. I gotta get big and buzz, I gotta be able to fight, I gotta mm -hmm. this, I gotta that. What was your notion before you went in and then when you went in, how different it was from what you thought it was gonna be? When, when, like when I went in, I thought it was gonna be like, people on the street, they made, like, People make the prison sound like the worst shit. Like, when you go in there, bro, be ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Like, the prison I went to, every prison not like that. So the prison I went to, I went to Bradshaw. Yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a TD side, state jail side. Mm. I was on the state jail side at first because the charge that I had, there was a firearm. It ran concurrent with the charge that I had. TDC time for it. Oh, okay. So I did half of, I did most of my time on T state jail side. Okay, okay. So when I, when it was time for me to go to TDC, I had to go to college station for the open case, piss, um, I mean, marijuana case I had out there. Mm -hmm. I had to sign for that time. I had to come back to Bradshaw. But when I was going back now, I'm on the TDC side. Mm -hmm. So I got to do, redo everything. I got to shave my head again. Mm -hmm. I got a TDC number now, and I mean they another TDC ID, different shit like that. They put me in white now. I wasn't tan like the federal tan. Mm -hmm. I wasn't khaki. Then I switched over to the all white. I stayed. I went to when you going back through the process, you are gonna go to five different units. So I went to uh, Gurney, Bird, uh, damn, Gurney, Bird. Holiday in Huntsville and uh Beto and it's another it's another prison I went to. But it all put me back at Bradshaw. 
mm. on the state jail side because I made parole. Yeah. When they sent me to the TZ side, I was overdue release because of my state jail time, my back time. But okay, so in prison, um, tell me about something that happened that um, really wild you. Tell me about a prison story because we have a prison confession um, section to our stories. Mm. Something that somebody can learn from, something that you know happened like one. Well, and um, you overcame it. Oh, see, you, you already know. I saw that smile. <laughs> now, nah, one day, I, one day, it, 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 like the, it's the country, so it's like it's, 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 it's like segregated kind of. They got the Aaron Brotherhood, the Woods. That's the Caucasian side. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They got the Hispanic, the MS13, Tongo Blast, the Blacks. You know what I'm saying? Blood Crip, G, right. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Okay. One day, a riot popped off against white and black. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So when the riot popped off between white and black, it was you and it wasn't no, you sit back and chill. Everybody in that dorm had to fight. And it was so bad because everybody was close. No matter what your skin color was, everybody in that dorm stuck together, like, was cool. So it had to be something serious for us to go against each other. You know what I'm saying? So when it popped off, it was a different feeling because everybody, like, ain't what we tripping for? Like, oh, it's a serious, this is a serious problem. Like, that remind me on. of what you said about. Um, when we we're talking about gangs and saying that, you know, how some people feel like because, you know, a gang, when everything pop off like what you're talking about, you're supposed to stay together as mm-hmm. that gang. Blood's supposed to stay together. Crips supposed to stay together. But in reality, it's about the color of your skin, no matter what no matter sect what. or what, whatever you are. No matter what. No matter what. So when that popped off, like, it was a wake-up call, bro. Like, um, people shooting gas through the vent. They yeah, going, yeah. You know, beanbag guns. They doing yeah. all kinds of, you know what I'm saying? It just woke me up like, damn, I'm in the prison. Like, yeah, yeah. Getting shit to say. I can't talk to my family. I can't get no contact visit, no commissary. I'm on restriction. I can't yeah, go outside. I got to eat sex. Sex. I got to eat bologna, apples, and that's it. And mm. in the morning, I get a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Yeah. And the milk. That's it. That was the worst horrible, time, bro. Horrible. That was the worst time. And then when I got sipped off to the TEC side, I was in SEG the whole time. Because mm. I'm going through these different units. You had to go through intake process and all that. So you start off, and when you go to prison, you're going to start off in the cage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. before they send you, send you to the dorm. You That's know what I'm right. saying? Because they got to do your blood work. They got to get to know you and do all that stuff. They got to see what, how they going to. That tank is smaller, right? Man, yeah, it's a, yeah. all right. So twenty four, yeah, it's twenty four. But it was like in this in Bradshaw, it was cages. So okay, it was it was it was a dorm. Yeah, but it was cages. So it's boom, boom, boom. Three cages. It's a day room, one shower, one TV. That was in the intake part. When you get to the actual dorm, it's sixty four man tank. Yeah, and then it's spaced out. Mm. But before that, you in you just in a you sleeping with them strangers in the cage, bro. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, 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 yeah. So much you get to know everybody. Well, how how was it when you first went in there and you you didn't know the, that they was gonna make you eat fast, man? <laughs> you know okay? what I mean? Like five minutes and you gotta get up. I thought, and then just. <laughs> he heard that he's like, yo. Yeah, I know. For real. Yeah. How was that? One row, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Right. go, go. Like, he, he, he they trying to get on it too. Like, yeah, you they trying to get you up on it. I wonder if the women prisons are the same. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's no different. But how was it? You didn't know that at first they were gonna do that, did Man, you? Man, I seen that, bro. I was like, see what's so crazy? I'm thinking, when I'm getting there, when I'm going there, I'm thinking, like, damn, when I get here, I'm from a stove. I heard a commissary good here, and they like, man, you gotta wait thirty days before you can even make stuff. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? So I gotta eat. I, I'm forced to eat cafeteria, yeah. child food. Yeah, so I'm eating the child it's food. Bad, it's terrible. Man, it's terrible, bro. It's you get pancakes and peanut butter. Pancakes and peanut butter. That's about it. That's it. As soon as you walk through it, as soon and brass out, it was so bad, bro. Like the rats was so bad. As soon as you walk in the cafeteria. The it's an apple, you see food in the corner, and you know, rats got a hold to it. Like, Dang for sure. It. Like, I ain't gonna lie, after I made store, when, when it was time for me to be able to go to the store, I never went back to that child. 
Never. I used to let people have my ID here. You can have my ID. People that wanted to go, my partners that wanted to go or wanted to go to just to sneak off, go to a different dorm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you can use my ID, bro. I'm not coming out this dorm for nothing but wreck, haircut, visit, come and say. So did it. you lay it down? Why you didn't have to work? You had an infirmary, a pass or something? Nah, I ain't. I, I had, yeah, I had an infirmary pass because my leg was messed up then sick as hell, so I ain't have to. Yeah, you didn't have to work. I ain't have to wait. So them niggas were hitting that one AP. They were going uh, out there killing. They come back every day. <laughs> Dirty, come back. Uh, whole squad. Whole squad. Field squad. Yeah. Turn out. Yeah. That's, that's a terrible feeling, bro. He's sitting there all day just chilling. Chilling. So I don't remember. Did I ask you? I didn't ask you um, if you were raised with your mom and dad in the same house. Uh, I, I was raised by my mom. I'm, I'm my mom's only child. On my dad's side, I have two brothers. Now I have three brothers and three sisters. Mm. So, yeah, my and dad. And he wasn't in the house with you as a kid nah, growing up? No, he was in prison. Really? Yeah, my dad was in prison. For until you were how old? Uh, until I was in, I was in sixth grade. Then he went back until I was in the ninth grade. So, now he has so, so you wasn't able to build a relationship with him? Mm-hmm. But I had my uncles on his side. I had my mom, my mom's brothers. You know what I'm saying? So so you didn't feel like you needed for father love. I mean, now that like like I now that I got kids, I know how to feel <laughs> having a father in the household. Right, is how major it is. But back then, I wasn't that affected. Like yeah, but I as we get older and you look back, you realize that this is the reason. As much as you think it didn't affect you, this is the reason why I acted this way. Yeah, if he was here, I knew I wouldn't have did. I wouldn't have went to prison. I wouldn't have got in trouble in school, suspended from school, detention, ISS, alternative school. Nothing. You were just acting out that whole time. It wasn't even that I was acting up. It was just like. Certain, like, I ain't gonna lie, I was a class clown. Man, <laughs> I was a class clown for sure. Like, and as bad, smart as ever. Bad, bad, bad class clown. And, like, I played basketball, but I I played City League AAU. I could never play for the school because I was always in trouble. Damn. And I went passing. So Damn. when did you figure out um, that you wanted to do music with all of this that's going on? I was eight years old. I was doing music in elementary. Really? My own music. In elementary, how? Mm-hmm. My mom had a. My mom, my mom, like we. I, I ain't gonna lie. I was, I was spoiled. We had our times. We went through situations where we were struggling, but I was spoiled, like up and down. You know what I'm saying? We had, everybody had And you were days. still bad. Yeah. But my mom, she had a computer. My mom worked at Kmart. Mm-hmm. My whole childhood life, like when I was, until I got in high school, but she worked at Kmart before they started mm-hmm. closing them down. So she had a computer in her room and I just, she was very in tune with me, like letting me play computer games. She bought me computer games, all kind of stuff. Let me play on the computer. This one, it was the AOL dial-up on the internet. You know, the internet had to dial-up to, for you to be on the internet. Mm-hmm. But I ended up, like, I seen people around in Lufkin, like, doing music. So I just wanted, I just tried it. And when I tried it, I fell in love with it, like, making my first song. Like, it felt good. How I'm, old were you when you made your first major, like, you started taking it seriously and you made your first Made your song and everybody heard it. When I was eight. That's when you made your ma- your first major. Sincere. What major song was that at eight? MySpace. It was on MySpace. In Lufkin, it was for major because I was so young. Mm-hmm. And like, I was, I, was a pop, I was always a popular kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, because of my dad, like family, and my brothers, on my, my brother on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. My friends and stuff like that. So I was always popular. So I think the song was called uh, No No Bites Just Slabs. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No and, Bites Just Slabs. Yeah. So, because the car, like Houston, I mean, right, Texas, right, the right. slab situation. So, uh, so after eight, 
Because you say you took it serious. Then after eight, when did people start noticing and trying to come to you to help you advance or help you get better? Mm, I say about after eight, people was, at, at, at eight, I had my own CDs. I printed my own CD covers, made my own album covers, passing out my own CDs. You just want to be a rapper all around because you hated school. Man, I passed my CDs out at Boys and Girls Club. Seriously. I at eight years old. Seriously. Mm. Most eight-year-old kids are not trying to figure that out. I had it on my mind. Look, it's my first album because my mom still got it. That's the back of it. This is what you, at eight, that's, that's your picture. That's me. <laughs> Let me see that. <laughs> Give it to him. And then the young nigga owned it. That's what he made for himself when he was eight. How did you figure out how to do that? I don't know. <laughs> like, I, it just, like, I, I'm very smart when it comes to electronic computers. I let, like, I seen people doing it. Like, I seen people making album covers, and I just, like, looked it up on the internet and found out, like, a photo editing app, and I started putting my own words wow. on it. Stuff like that. I got my own, I shot my own, I shot my first video in my that's mom's. Hard. That's hard. In my mom's living room. Hmm. It's still on YouTube. So it's you shot your me. own video. You didn't get nobody to hold it, do Didn't nobody have to do nothing. And who edited it? Me. Myself. And how old were you? On Windows Media. I was, when I shot my first video, I was nine, ten. Mm-mm. Seriously, it's still on there. 13 years ago. And you uploaded this 13 years ago on YouTube? Yes, ma'am. You did this video? Yes, ma'am. That's dope. Yes, ma'am. You can tell. (laughs) Babe. I was a child. I was a baby, baby. It's crazy. Oh, that crazy. nigga going in. That's what they don't want to hear right there. One deep. Yeah, that's what I love that. I love that video. 13 years ago. I can't believe you uploaded that 13 years ago. And my ago. mama heard the cussing and she was like, you need to take that shit down. I was about to say, but most mamas, because I hate cursing too, I promise you, but yeah. I'll be more concerned. I'm like, how did you do this? That's the part at eight. That's the part that's tripping me out. And she seen nine. She- she See heard, that. She heard the music. She was like, you need to take this shit down. Delete this. Delete that. But my Annie was so cool. My Annie was my number one fan still to this day. My That's mom. Awesome. My mom. Mom's my sister. Na- my mom and my aunt and my number one fan. When, when did your mom switch it up, though? She switched that shit up quick. <laughs> when? When she saw that you were Serious making traction and you wasn't trying when to give up? When she started seeing that I wasn't, I was like, Man, she see me slow down on basketball and all that. I was still playing AAU while I was rapping. Man. Yeah, but you was giving trouble at school. You was getting yeah. So she seen that. She was like, she. I think she just instilled and in, started into her mind like, okay, this nigga wanna be a rapper. There ain't no way around it. Like mm-hmm. she, I started. She started buying shit. She started buying. We went Radio Shack. We start ending up at the yeah, music store. Yeah, you, because you're her only microphone. child. She buying microphone stands, she buying pop screens, she buying computers, she buying She give you everything to succeed. Everything, bro. So, and when she started annoying, it was like basically like, I ain't gonna lie, it was like some DJ screw shit. When it got to the point where everybody started coming to our house to record. Oh yeah? I started my own. Did you own charge? La- nah. Cause <laughs> I started my own label. My own label was called All Star Entertainment. And how old were you at this point? I gotta keep asking because you was, started early. I was in I was in sixth grade. So when I started my own label, my mom started knowing the traffic at our house. And she just she she just gave into it. Like she was very big on like when she was at work, don't know don't have nobody in the house. That's how you come home and your shit be gone. She yeah. was big on that. Yeah. But I still did it. I was big on like I need to people. Did come people home. steal anything? Nah, I ain't no. Mm-hmm. 
That's crazy because in the country, man, for y- y'all supposed to know all them people any damn way. Mm-hmm. You know most of them family, but they still a steal. Yeah, some. They'll still take steal. some, but mm-hmm. we know. I say they didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, but have. we only really know which one stole it. That's how cold it is. I was 13 when I had my first LLC. That's hard. Your That's mama hard. went and did it for you. She helped me. I figured it out myself, but she helped me. She paid for it. Wow. You All just Star start- Entertainment, A S E. You still on it? I I now um I'm switching it up right now. I still got it. And you got artists still signed under you? Yeah. My my day one partners, my best friends, they still with it. Wow. So t- explain to me, I, I see you with Drake on there, uh, on the picture. How did you even end up knowing who Drake was as far as linking up with him? I know you know who he is, of yeah. course, but yeah, just my- just how do y'all end up linking? Like, um, Oh, the situation. How long ago was that? That was. It's been happening. It's been happening a few times. It's been happening a few times. I've been, time. I've been drunk. Okay. But well, the first on, time you met him, though. The first time I ever met him was. Um, first time I ever met him, it was his birthday in mm-hmm. California. He had a party. And I went out there with Jay Prince. That was my first time I ever meet him. Mm-hmm. And the crazy part about this situation is. When they having a party, like, the day before, they, like, they had it. They, like, forced it. Like, man, y'all y'all better go get y'all suits. Y'all need to go get suits. Everything is Because you got to dress up. You got to dress up for this party. So it was last minute. So I'm scrambling around trying to find a suit. I finally find a suit. You know what I'm saying? I get situated or whatever. We fly out. I was on parole. I wasn't even supposed to leave the state. So I go out there. And the crazy part about it is, when I got there, every all right, everybody flight. I missed my flight. My flight, somehow my flight got delayed. I was on a different flight because everybody booked their plane ticket before me. So I was on a different flight. When I got there, the party was so packed, the fire marshal came and shut it down. Mm, so I was on the good. outside of the gate. Me and my partner Slim, we was on the outside of the gate while everybody was in the inside. So I never got to go in that party. That party right there, I didn't get to go in. Mm. I went in the after party. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? After of everybody went they, in the clothes. got that messed up. Let's yeah. hear this new spot. And I, and I got in. I finally got to meet Jake. And it was just like, I ain't even, I ain't like, after being around meeting so many superstars and, mm. and whatnot, I ain't, I noticed that it was real big on don't be on no no no, no group fan, shit, yeah. no fan shit. So I went on no pulling no camera out, mm. no none of that. It was just a shake a legend hand. It was some a situation and the opportunity to embrace it. Yeah, but the, the one that we saw online, you took a picture. Yeah. So when was that one? Was that one of the first time or the second time? That was went? his birthday. That was another time. Okay, so yeah, okay. and and that part and that 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 right there. At that event, they play my music. We got to talk, wow. get to know each other. What he said about your music? He love, he love my music. One thing I always ask everybody, because I feel like when you are around people who are at a higher level, whether career-wise or age-wise, I always say, try to grasp as much as you can grasp from that person. No, See yeah. what, soak up the knowledge, soak up so anything that they're trying to give you, yeah. soak it up. Yeah. What have you learned from... Drake? Um, consistency. Don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Stay, stay, stay. Try to stay a factor. You know what I'm saying? Like people people do get to the point where they get cocky and feel like they name so solidified. Mm-hmm. But then I got to the point I started noticing like, damn, it's a new rapper every minute of the day. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, they got the say cheeses. They got all these different... You know what I'm saying? These people posing them, like people getting it's this rap shit is getting like it's the expansion of it. Everybody's starting to rap now. Right. So now like me, me and Drake, yeah, that's cool, but me and his 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 manager, bodyguard, Tubbs, okay. we got the strong relationship oh, about okay. the whole situation. So me and Tubbs got a strong relationship. Me and T V Gucci got a strong relationship. That's his cousin. So going back to, okay, eight, nine coming up, um, you started, your mama see that you're not going to give up. You're going to keep pushing towards being a rapper because that's what you want to do. You got older now. You got in trouble. Mm. You said 18, 19, you got in trouble, went to prison. Mm. 
When, how old, so were you writing music in prison? I had, when I came home, I had 324 songs. Mm. And how long were you gone for? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. 324 songs? That I never recorded. I still ain't never recorded one of those songs. Even to today? Mm. Wow. But then when you got out, you said, okay, I'm going to do this full time now. Yeah, because, and when I, the reason why I ain't recorded one of those songs when I got out, I noticed the motion of the music, and I'm like, man, this shit here behind. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, like right now, I ain't wrote a song since I've been in prison. Really? I don't write music no more. You punch in. Punch in. And I then became so like hard at it. Hard at it, bro. Like I, I know if I write, it's gonna go over people here. I don't want to be. Sometimes you can be too powerful. Too, you think too much. You can think too hard nowadays, right. like, and you can be too powerful for people these days because people don't want to think these days. Like they ain't trying to mm. find the message in music no more. No, it's about catchy, yeah. how catchy it is, and exactly. You know what I'm saying so. So, I, don't write, I don't even write music no more. How long did it take you before somebody came to you and say, I want to sign you? Mm. How old were you? How long after you got out of prison? It was a week when I got out, got out of prison. Because I got on Facebook and Instagram freestyle. Mm-hmm. So, and that got you a lot of views. Yeah. So who first reached out to you? Mm. Uh, the first people, it was uh, um, the the situation that I was in before I got in this one, the Shot is United situation. Mm-hmm. Um, Rap a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Atlantic Records. They all reached out. Yeah. Okay. Sure. What made you um, what made you pick generosity? Generosity. Genuine. Oh, that's why. Genuine, genuine to a brother now used to come all the way to Lufkin and get me. I was fresh out. I didn't have a car yet. Wow. It wasn't like I was just trying to get back in the streets and get some fast money and get a mm-hmm. car. You know what I'm saying? And the others weren't willing to do that. And they was, um, they came and get, they either came and got came and got me. Or my mom took me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or family took me, brought me here, or met halfway. But it was so genuine. Like, ain't nobody else going to do this. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So after you chose them, how long did you stay with them? And what's the biggest song that you did for them during that time? And what's so crazy, it wasn't a, it wasn't a record label at first. Oh, okay. It was a clothing brand. Uh-uh. And I never signed. We ain't never signed no paperwork for me to be their artist. Really? Seriously. So you just stayed there because? Generosity. Really? Loyalty. Everybody became family. So it went in the body. Like, and after you, they decided to become a label? Or are they still not a label? Th- yeah. Okay. And like when, they, when we started seeing the music, how the music was doing, then it became a label. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? First mm-hmm. it was just Shot as United Clothing. Then it became Shot as United Music Group. Damn, you know what I'm saying? So I just I just like since in twenty twenty two I signed my first record deal ever. Like on paper. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Wow. And how, what year did you get out? I'm, I'm just trying to see 2019. how twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So see, but see, but before that, I went never coming to Houston as a, when I like. And who gave you that deal? Prison. Uh the recent deal? Yeah. UBK. UBK. Yeah, you better okay. know. So they pulled, they they heard you mm-hmm. and came and had yeah. negotiations with you. Yeah, I have like the person that's over it, OG Nick. We had we got a strong relationship, like strong bond, like on some generosity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but before like he had our, they had already had a label. Like right now, his label it just became a year old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they had already had he had already started the label. And he had three artists already. So I'm watching, like, how he treat them, how they doing. He buying jewelry and watching, like, how he 
support them, the people, like how people, the the attraction they're getting, like how people coming to them, and, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I watched everything before I even, I was in the background and everything, watching everything play out before I even signed. I was wow. still around, but I wouldn't sign. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then one day we was like, man, bro, we might well make this official. Like, go ahead and Let's go ahead and do it. We did it. So, so. you went ahead and did it. And um, was the deal very lucrative? Biggest deal in the history of Texas. Why you feel like it's the biggest deal in the... <laughs> Advance-wise, for sure. Advance-wise, for sure. And how do you know that? Do you know all these people's offers? How do you know everybody's offers? I ain't going to say I know everybody's offers, but like this came from... Head up people Like saying Like man It's not a big deal You know what I'm saying Saying that Just trying to gas you up It ain't Yo it ain't I ain't saying like On no cocky shit Or saying it's a fact I don't know what they didn't got But like what people say So for our viewers To know what you're talking about Around, I don't know if you want to give the exact amount or you want to just give me a well, round about. They put a uh, they put a big post on the on the on online, so oh. it's out there. Yeah. So how much was it? Uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollar advance. Wow. That can check. That and that's the biggest advance in Texas or in probably Houston. Probably Houston. Yeah, sure. Mm. You know what I'm saying so. That can check big though, bro. It's bigger than. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Well, advanced, though. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And how long do you have to stay there with him, with, with them? Five hours, but I'm going to be there longer than that. Because you love it. I'm going to be there longer than that. That's dope. That'd probably be some, that'd probably be some UGK type of, you know what I'm And in your entire career till today, in your opinion, which song that you have that you would say it's your biggest? Locked in. Locked in. Why? Uh, right now it's at like three hundred and four. I it did like a hundred thousand views in like some like a like a month. Mm. And this was out fresh out. It was twenty nineteen. I was fresh out. So I just we just pulled up in the hood, shot a video. It took off. Wow, that's crazy, man. So it I, drawed a lot of attention. I feel like, like, and then what's so crazy about it? I dropped before I signed the deal. I dropped two mixtapes. It got a lot of attention. You know what I'm saying? But I slowed down on dropping music. But who who came to you? Like, like I see you. I see you with uh, with uh, James Prince Jr. Mm-hmm. in the car. Like that. That's the first thing pop up when you when you see. How did you and him end up even knowing each other? I knew Junior before that on some on just like regular shit. But the Shadows United situation. The person that made Shadows United, Big E. Big E made Shadows United. He's rap like him and Nader. What you know what I'm saying? They ran the music label for Shadows United. And they rap like so. That's, that's how y'all end up looking. It's like a branch. And rap like Shadows United in, you know what I'm saying? So I got to ask you this, man, because I've asked everybody this. I'm down here in Houston, Texas. Yeah. When Where was you at when uh, uh, Takeoff uh, was uh, was basically killed? I was at home. You was at home? Mm. What did you think when you first heard about that? Dang, that's a legend, bro. It's a legend. It's huge, man. R.I.P. Takeoff. R.I.P. Takeoff, man. Crazy situation. So being, you know, being that, I mean, you have... Uh, you hear all these stories. Mm-hmm. Don't know none of them. I, we wasn't there. We don't know what went on. But just being in Houston and the way you move, how has that affected or changed the way you think about how you move in the streets? It just because you know, of you got to realize how people looking at this. Anything can happen, bro. At any time. Any time. So when you look at being, being because there are so many different things on the internet, we don't know what's true, but we do know what's being said. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at what they're saying and then your affiliations with, like, uh, say, Junior and all this different stuff that wraps around it, how does that affect you mentally? It it it, it don't, because, like, anything, don't. anything can happen. So you and just, then I'm not in the room to even speak on 
Like I wasn't in the room, so I don't know what's you don't going on. Yourself. I don't like if I'm not in the room and witnessing with my own two eyes. I don't believe you don't know what, 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 what. Yeah, because like I said, we don't know what the situation was, but yeah. we do know that um, they they were down here um, hanging out or whatnot. But yeah. um, I just think that it was a very unfortunate situation. But I do know that. Um, that it's something to where we have to find a way to mend a heck of a gap. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Between different situations that's done taking place. Yeah. We definitely want to try to figure out a way to show love through this situation. No, for sure. We love Migos. Mm-hmm. We love Jane Prince yeah. Jr. Yeah. We love... P, we love all these people. Yeah. We got to find a way to make sure mm-hmm. that we figure out a way to build a bridge and not a wall. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. Because of the way that this whole thing can turn. It can turn real ugly mm-hmm. over whatever the situation may be, and it may be a lot of other people that— you know, just a bunch of fools uh, mm-hmm. doing crazy stuff. You know I'm telling the truth. And I feel like the internet play a big part the in it. The internet play a huge part in it. I can't even say big part. It played the biggest part. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So the internet, the, and who's to say we don't even know what's going on or what's, what's, what's really, really going happening, down. what's really going down. We Like I say, we went in the room. You know what I'm saying? The internet can make a situation uh, a million times worse, bro. With that being said, um, do you still have a relationship with Junior or any of those guys over there? Uh, it, my love still, my love don't never change for a person. Somebody got to. That's family. I look at them like, you know what I'm saying? Look, I look at them like family. Like a person got to do something to me. Yeah. For me, to me. Yeah. And I ain't saying that in a selfish way, but like somebody got to do something. Yeah. To me, for me to look at them as, okay, my feelings to change toward them. Do you think that they seen, because when Finesse came home, they they really, really ramped him uh, as a brand, brought him in, and he had just came home. Was that the same type, type feel? Like when you came home, was it something that where you linked with them, or or it took time for them to even notice you? It took time Cause I'm not from Houston and But he t- not either He from Memphis It take time to build on a person though mm-hmm. Like But he had a rep too Before he Finesse left been, Finesse been signing Junior Even before he went to prison? Nah But during prison like, Oh during prison Yeah so that, that that situation Oh It's just new to the world Wow People on the outside You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah He been it's, we already knew this was going to happen. I've been knew it was going to happen since I first came down. It's 2019, 2020. I've been new. Wow. I already knew. It just happened out here. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, like the people I'm signed to, they was, no, I mean the people. Where are they I was, from? Where is that company? Where are they from here? UBK. They but from? Nah, I didn't mean to say UBK, but the people, the uh, Shadows United situation, Nate and them, they already, they used to talk to Finesse and like chop it up with him while he was in jail. So I already knew that situation. I already knew the whole Finesse two time situation. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Um, so, um, and and like I said, you 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 basically uh, you got your deal now. What's next? Turn up, like turn turn everything up, man. But me, I want to turn, when I go to a situation, I'm trying to turn that situation up. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to make everybody like, I'm trying to turn the whole movement up. When you first got your advance to 350000 what did you do? What was the first thing you bought? Mm, first thing I bought, with three, uh, I gave money to my family, like That's you know, stuff for my family, stuff for my kids. You know what I'm saying? Different stuff like that. Bills, all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just go buy design and just, you know what I'm saying, mess it off. Just basically like kind of family stuff, mainly. Stuff for me. 
You know, right. you, how do you feel about the fact that you, you could change your whole generational wealth and help families, your kids and your kids' kids? I got so many plans, but it's crazy. That's man. hard. That's hard. That's all I've been worried about. Taking, make sure the family straight. Making sure the family good, man. That's it, bro. Because I'm like, damn, bro. I like, like how, how the world is right now. Like, you got to have some set up to pass down to your kids, gotta bro. Have you got to, like, like... I'm trying to make on remember my last name. That's the kind of that's the kind of vibe I'm on. Like I want my last Top name. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Number one, any genre. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Number one. Mm. Your number one. Your top three. My top three. Number one. Any genre. Drake. Drake, number okay, one. Okay, number two. Mm. All time. All time. Mm -hmm. Any genre. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Drake. Mm. Number two. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't just like. Number two. Number two. I gotta say, Lil Baby. Little baby. Okay, and number three. Number three, our final one. Myself. Hey. Okay. And that's what I be thinking too. Like I be like, is he gonna? Is they gonna put themselves in this thing? Some sure. people do. I really want to put myself number one. Hey. <laughs> so I already do a list. Hey. So do you? Um. Okay. Okay. How do people get a hold of you if they looking to try to holler at you? Instagram. Instagram at official or chat. Uh, Facebook chat Garrett. Um, YouTube, Lil Chad, and Lil Chad on all music platforms. That's hard. Who the hardest Texas artist that you, nigga from Texas that you that you can think outside of yourself? In Texas, new and up and coming. I asked GSO Fat that he said you. In Texas, mm -hmm. period. He just told me you was you was hard. Oh, uh, for sure. I gotta go with Fat. Oh yeah, yeah. I hard. believe in Fat, bro. You believe it? How did y'all build a bun? I see y'all got songs together. We got a bun together. How, right? did, how did you? How did you? How did you build that bun? Just being there for one another. Rap Live Studio. Really? That's where it started at. Yeah, that's where it started at. I met Fat. Fat was up there recording. He had a session. I had a session. Him and Noah was up there, and um. Noah pulled up in a big ass red truck. I never met Noah. I never seen Noah before. I'm like, man, who the hell is this? They jump out and we meet and greet. We chop it up. They was up there with Chris Bacon, ETCO. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I knew ETCO. They knew ETCO. So we, he, he, that's that's who linked us in together. So I got to know Fat. You know what I'm saying? The um that night. Shit, we turned the uh, studio session into the same session. We did four songs that night. Uh -huh. And we did the video like two weeks later. Wow. But ever since then, me and Fat, we wouldn't been everywhere together, bro. Wow. I think that's hard brotherhood, man. No, nah, for sure. together like that. No, nah, for sure. Man, I, I just want to tell you, man, you're a young woman. I'm watching you now, man. You know what I'm saying? You family. No, nah, for sure. I don't know what else you had going on. I don't care. No, nah, for sure. I want you to know God loves you, too. No, nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? No for matter sure. what you've been through, no matter who you've dealt with, no matter what you face, no for matter sure. how many times Satan tried to take you out, God loves you, and you can always turn to God. When yeah. you ain't got no father here on earth to be there for you in prison or whatever, nah, for you sure. always got God. For sure. And I got to say that. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? That's the most important thing out of everything that I done said since I've been sitting in this seat. That's real, bro. No, for real. You All you all you got to do is just focus. You're very special. God has given you opportunity that a lot of people will never, ever get. Young niggas all over. You know how many niggas in my inbox right now trying to rap and trying to get somebody to see them? That shit's so hard, bro. bro but, that shit but, hard but, to do, But, but you've done it. And you stay consistent. And God has blessed you. All I say is pay it forward, man. Let some little kids see that they can make it as well. Nah, for sure. For real. Right now, like, I'm trying to build that up. Like, Lufkin, we ain't just big on yeah. having too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Right now, I'm trying to take stuff that way, you know, build stuff out there, try to get the kids in motion, sports, all that. Yeah. Sports had kind of died down out there, so me, my brothers, we trying to put it back on. Like, I have no doubt that you're going to do it, bro. Nah, for sure. Anytime you see the, the pain that, and the passion and everything, look how you pushed it out from an early kid. Nobody, everybody ain't got that. No, for sure. Everybody don't have that. Everybody don't they can't go back and pull that up and say, "Man, this was me at when I was eight, or when I was seven, or when I was five, and I was passionate about it." They say that. No, for sure. The proof is in the pudding. For sure. I just gotta commend you for holding it down all this time, and you deserve everything that God have for you. Yes, sir. Everything. I appreciate that. Man, man. we love you, bro. No, for sure. His sure. love, bro. Man, and if you ever need anything. I'm just a phone call away. For sure. And if you want to pull up or you need me, tell me what's going on. I'm going to support you. Yes, sir. So, man, just let me know, man. Like I said, man, I'm. Uh, it's a lot of people I, I show love to. A lot of people show love to me. Welcome to the family, homie. Nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Man, check it, man. Did we get everything? Yeah. Because guess what? This ain't the last time you coming. Oh, nah, this you coming is... to Dallas to oh, my yeah. spot. I'll be there. To the, I just told Fat he coming in a couple of weeks. You should come with him. I'm going to be there. You going to come with him? I'll be we're there. We're going to run it back. Let's do it. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. Yes, sir.